Greetings! Ednit here. So I am doing my master's degree in creative learning processes uh, with an arts and crafts profile. This is the first of four semesters and for this first exam I have two practical tasks that I am to hand in. The first one is an animation uh, that's between two and four minutes long um, and I have a separate video on how I made that. Uh, I will link it in the description below. And this video will concentrate on my second task, which is extended drawing. And the question, <laughs> the question is, what can a line be? I have no clue. <laughs> I have briefly researched what extended drawing is, and that is artists who try to push the limits on what we understand as drawing. So for me, for example, drawing is a pen on paper. Or if I stretch my limits, it's digital <laughs> drawing. That's, that's kind of my limits for drawing. Uh, and this task is gonna ask so much more because this is about breaking down barriers between art forms. So for instance, mixing and matching drawing and sculpture. Uh, there are artists who fold paper or roll it up into cones or cylinders and then place them around, hang them from ceilings, make dome shapes, just make them stand out of the wall. And that's considered extended drawing. <laughs> to, to me, that's not drawing. But that's what I'm gonna have to work on in this task. I have to open up to a whole new way of thinking when it comes to drawing. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a process. So <clears throat> for my extended drawing, I kind of got inspired by a Swedish Norwegian artist called Vanna Bowles. She has this series of photorealistic drawings with three dimensional sur surrealistic, surrealistic. surreal. She has these three-dimensional surreal elements in her drawing. So <clears throat> in one of her drawings it's a photorealistic drawing of a woman laying on her front uh, in a bed with some sheets wrapped around her and the three-dimensional objects in this <laughs> drawing is some moths that are glued on top of the body and all around the frame, outside of the frame. And that's like the surreal, creepy element that's maybe supposed to hint to sickness, illness, how we humans are plagued with stuff, how we plague the world. I. I am no <laughs> art interpreter and I usually don't put any political aspects into my art. I draw things or paint things because it's pretty, because I just have an idea. I like the visual aspect of it. But I might have to change that for this task. So I'm not going to be drawing photorealistic photos. I will be using my own style, uh, which is, I think you can just describe it as um, neo-traditional uh, and it's kind of an, kind of a tattoo style. So I'm going to be mixing that drawing style with some three-dimensional objects um, and I will be drawing portraits. I am not sure what the portraits will be. 
right now. I am not sure what kind of three-dimensional objects I'm going to be using uh, because I think um, a fun aspect of this is to go at it with with an open mind. So I will start drawing without knowing anything other than the fact that I'll be making portraits, two portraits. And I'll find out everything else while I'm drawing. I do not like my face that much that I want to draw it and I don't want to draw anyone else. So I'm gonna let my imagination do the work and kind of see what comes of it. Then I will find some three-dimensional objects around the house to match. This is gonna be exciting. <laughs> so let's get started. So the day before I was to hand in my exams, I had an accident. I accidentally dropped my external hard drive in the floor and it crashed. And instead of giving me access to my files, it just said beep, made a crunching sound and gave me no access to anything. Fixing it would cost me a small fortune, so I decided to save whatever I could from the computer trash, see what of the video clips that were saved on my Google Photos drive thing, and kind of piece together whatever I could find or save. You may notice that not all of the process is recorded. Uh, that's because it was, but I lost a lot of the clips. So I kind of just had to patch together what I found. Um, but I will try my best to explain the process to you. This little incident made it so I had to edit both this video and my animations video three times because of lost files and computer crash and then program crash and then when I went to do the voiceovers it also crashed so I had to do the voiceovers twice as well yay but these are the pieces that I managed to save and I hope that you are able to follow my process I start my process by drawing a circle. Then I draw a vertical line, which indicates the direction of the face. I draw the jawline and then I mark where I want the eyes, the nose and the lips to go. This woman gets a small nose, so I have to draw everything in proportion to this nose. A small nose to me indicates a sharp featured face, so I give her small eyes but some plump lips because I feel that looks nice in a woman's face. I go over with some more detailing and I work out where I want the brows to go. She is gonna be an elegant and yet kind of strict woman, so I don't want her brows raised too high. The rest of this process was lost, but as you can see, she wound up getting some strict features, which reminded me of a Victorian woman, so I drew the well-known hairdo, and now I am coloring in the features I like with a different colored pencil for the tracing that my baby is nice to help me with here. I'm using a portable tracing tape. This is what my portrait looks like after the tracing is done and I'm now just gonna go in and fix some minor details. This means drawing on eyelashes, darkening the eyes, do some shading around the nose and then also shade the lips to make them look more plump and more three-dimensional. 
Everything about this portrait is made up by micro decisions along the way. These are decisions that I make uh, based on my style of drawing, the neo-traditional style, and also how I relate all the facial features, how I decide to shade to make different parts of the face stand out, and then finally what type of human I feel she looks like. Sadly for my second portrait I lost all of the sketching process, but as you can see this is the portrait after I traced it. I'm now doing the same as I did to the last portrait. I am going over and doing some shading, fixing up some details and making all the features more distinct. For this woman I started by drawing the facial direction and then I drew in the lines that help me see the placement of the nose, eyes and lips. I started by drawing the nose as I usually do and it turned out quite broad. To make the lips in proportion to this nose they also turned out quite plump and quite big. Uh, and I thought that big eyes would go nicely with this look. When I kind of finished the face, I thought, hmm, this to me looks like an African American woman. So I kind of just ran with that. I tried to make all of the features look like that, but not stereotypical. Here I'm going in doing some more detailed work, putting in some eyelashes and then just shading in where I feel I need some more shadows or some more depth. This neo-traditional style went really well with this portrait and she's turning out quite stunning. This is how the portraits look so far. So uh, a couple of days ago uh, I held a presentation for the rest of my class about my, uh, my progress in the project and I kind of just got devastating questions about how my my project is extended drawing uh, and I didn't really have any answers because I'm having I'm having trouble understanding what extended drawing is uh, because of my limited view of drawing because to me it, drawing is pen to paper and all I kind of got is that three-dimensional kind of aspect of it. And in my mind, that should be enough. A couple of days later, I asked my teachers for some guidance. And they actually kind of gave me a revelation that the women that I drew, those two portraits, uh, they are pieces of my personality. Um, not like I'm a schizophrenic or anything, but... You kind of have different kinds of or different sides of your personality and and apparently those two portraits are two pieces of mine. So the African-American woman that I drew, uh, she kind of represents a lot of my look, uh, like my, my dreadlocks. That isn't a uh, really... Caucasian hairstyle. Um, my color choices uh, often kind of go to the warm, warm orangey, yellow, reds that you can see in a lot of, of African American fashion. Also, I love to travel and, and kind of discover different cultures, see what they're all about, taste different foods, uh, see how they live in different ways and also 
a lot of the music that I like uh, have African roots. So, for instance, I love gospel. I love soul, R&B, blues, Negro spirituals. And all of those genres have African roots. So, for my Victorian woman, she kind of represents more my aesthetics. So, I have this over a hundred year old printing box um, that I keep my <laughs> my craft supply in uh, and it's just a, a bunch of drawers with teeny tiny uh, sections for uh, for letters for old printing presses. Also I have glass domes filled with knickknacks that I find beautiful or Kind of fragile that I want to protect but also uh, have on display and also I I love like the old traditional ways of doing things uh, especially in arts and crafts so I love I I want to do everything the way they did it before so if I find a technique that's over a hundred years old I'm like super happy because because I know that I'm doing it exactly the same way, or as close to the same way um, as people did it a hundred years ago. And that's kind of cool to me. <laughs> so I think I will keep focusing on, on the personality aspect of it. Um, and that kind of gives it a, a new meaning. Uh, because I'm not a political person, so I can't just twist it to some strong political women and also I'm not a surrealist so I can't just come up with something that that's kind of crazy or a surrealist to put in there so I'm gonna go with the personality stuff uh, and even though there are probably a hundred more sides to my personality these are two that I'm going to keep studying for now. So I will I will use the 3D objects that I have in my in my home. Uh, but I will I will kind of I will use the ones that make those sides of my personality happy, if that makes sense, <laughs> because that will make it even more true to the personality aspect of it. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. As an extra dimension, I thought it would be cool to color my portraits with makeup. Uh, and I did not just go all in on my finished drawings. I uh, used the sketches to test out this, um, this plan. I start by covering the entire face and neck with some powder just to get an overall tan. Then I go in with the contouring palette to give the face some shape and also use it as a kind of shading method, as you would a normal drawing. For the eyes I used a beige and brown eyeshadow because I wanted some depth but I still wanted it to look kind of natural because the women weren't using a lot of makeup at that time. I also used some brown eyeshadow to fix her eyebrows. With a makeup brush I applied some lipstick and this actually gave the picture a fourth dimension because I now can smell her. I kind of repeated the same process with my other portrait except I made the colors a bit darker because she's supposed to be an African American woman. So I used some darker powder, some darker contouring, but I tried my best not to make her look muddy or dirty or too dark because I don't want her to look stereotypical just because she's supposed to be an African American woman. Because people come in all shades. I wanted her to have brown eyes, so I used a blue eyeshadow to kind of make her eyes pop 
Then I went in with some lipstick and outlined the lips. And now it's time for the real portraits. I basically used the same method as I did with the test portraits, except I wanted to test out some fake eyelashes and some eyeliner because I thought it would be fun to add uh, an extra three-dimensional object in the face and not just as clothing or a headdress. This actually looked really cool. So for the first three-dimensional element, I beaded a necklace for my African-American woman with some tiny beads that I had in my craft stash. I used colors that will link to the headdress that I'm gonna make and that I've seen in typical African-American fashion before. This was actually a long process because the beads are so tiny and they did not want to cooperate. To fasten the necklace, I punched one hole on either side of her neck. Then I tied a knot at the end of each row of beads just to make sure that they wouldn't fall off. Then I put the ends of the fishing line that the beads were on through the sheet of paper. I tied a knot with all of the strands on the back, then I taped it to the back of the sheet of paper so that the knot would not unravel and everything would not fall apart. For the headdress, I actually cut off a piece of my own headdress uh, or head wrap. I used some aluminum foil which I scrunched to a ball and glued to the top of her head with some hot glue. Because this is not a three-dimensional head, I had to use some hot glue to fasten the head wrap to the head. With the hot glue, I also fastened the head wrap to the aluminum foil. And after I had arranged the head wrap the way I wanted it, I fastened it to itself with some hot glue as well so that it wouldn't fall apart. I made a couple of hoop earrings from some golden beads and I fastened them the same way I did the necklace. For my Victorian woman, I found some fake velvet, which I scrunched up into a poofy ball shape and I glued it as a type of shoulder pad to her shoulder. I used some more of the velvet to create part of her dress. I had some spare lace lying around, so I glued it as a type of shirt underneath the, the dress. I cut up a piece that I was going to use or make as a ruffled neck. Bit by bit I glued this on with some hot glue, then I folded it and glued it again so that it would make a ruffle effect. This to me just made the woman look more historically accurate. I glued a piece of the velvet on top of the lace so that it would look like she wore the velvet as some sort of jacket or coat or a dress over the lace as an undergarment. In my craft stash, I also found a short piece of ribbon, which I thought would be a nice accent to the ruffled neck. So I glued that on with hot glue as well. 
I cut off the excess fabric that was hanging on the outside of the bottom of the sheet of A3 paper. And then I found my favorite pendant, which I just have not found a home for yet. So this would actually be the perfect time to use it. And it looked really nice. I was going to make a hat, but that would be too time consuming. So I just found a cute little bow and I glued it to her hair. And she also got a pair of beautiful pearls. So my drawings are done, uh, but I'm not convinced that they are extended drawing. Well, they are, they are drawings and they have three dimensional shapes on them. They don't have any type of surreal meaning. They don't have any political aspect. They just have a personal aspect. So they are parts of my personality and I could have drawn so many more, uh, but I didn't want to overdo it. For, for this exam. I did not have time to make any more, um, but it's definitely something that I, I could, I could see myself doing someday because it was actually kind of fun to see them come together and they actually look, they look really good and they look like different kinds of me. Not like the face. The face does not look like me at all, but but I can see I can see parts of myself in both portraits. And uh and that's kind of fun because this whole drawing experience was kind of without any <laughs> any big kind of conscious decision. Everything was on a whim. I started without knowing anything more than okay so I'm gonna draw some portraits and that's it. I know that I'll be using three-dimensional objects and glue or fasten them to the paper that I drew on some way or another and that's it. And so I just had to start and everything from the positioning of the face or like the direction they look to their facial features to their hair or no hair <laughs> and then to the to the clothing or the the three-dimensional things everything was it just built upon the idea of portraits. So step by step, I had to make decisions. Okay, so if she's facing this way, I will ha have to kind of angle her face the same way. And then I start drawing one of the facial features. And then I see oh okay now I have to relate the other facial features like I have to match the the nose to the lips because if you have big lips then it's weird if you have a tiny little nose and all of a sudden it was a face with distinct features that suited either a type of people like a different ethnicity or a different time and that's that's kind of it's kind of fun. I'm still not sure that this is extended drawing. I'm not sure this is contemporary art. I just know that this is my take on this task. And I'm actually quite happy with how they turned out because I had no clue when I started what I was going to do except draw portraits with some three-dimensional shapes on them and all of a sudden they are me or two parts of me. So we'll see, maybe I'll draw some more or the rest or 
how many more I feel like there are. But I think that they would have turned out differently if I were to kind of decide beforehand that I'm going to draw self-portraits of my personality. I don't think they would have turned out the way they did. Or at least not the the drawing part of it. All in all, I'm I'm actually really happy with the outcome. And I hope you like the result as well. So let's see the reveal.